neurosurgeon confirms that afterlife exists. Before we start with this video I would like to ask you a few simple questions, do you believe in life after death? What do you think? Do you think people have soul? There are incredible and shocking cases when people return to life and tell their unbelievable stories which they've experienced in the afterlife. First you should know that the afterlife is something that has been experienced by many people around the world. In this video we are going to share with you the unbelievable afterlife experience, experienced firsthand by Harvard trained brain neurosurgeon for 25 years, Dr. Evan Alexander. You should know that this is not just another afterlife account that can be written off as a hallucination. Before we look at his afterlife experience explanation let's take a look at his record. Before this incredible experience he did not believe existence of a non-physical spirit. Dr. Evan was trained in Western Medical School and surrounded by medical colleagues who are deeply invested in the materialism view of the universe. So he thought that the idea of a soul was outlandish. Dr. Evan believed stories of the afterlife to be hallucinations or products of the human imagination. But he changed his mind after he was in a coma for seven days caused by severe bacterial meningitis. During his coma he experienced a vivid journey into what he knew to be the afterlife visiting both heavenly and not so heavenly realms. So when Dr. Evan returned to his body and experiencing a miraculous healing against all odds, and went on to write the New York Times number one best-selling book Proof of Heaven. So he confirmed that our life here is just a test to help our souls evolve and grow, and that the way we succeed in doing so is to proceed with love and compassion. Here are just a few other notable points he made. Evan said that the experience of the afterlife was so real and expansive that the experience of living as a human on earth seemed like an artificial dream by comparison. He also mentioned that the fabric of the afterlife was pure love. He said that love dominated the afterlife to such a huge degree that the overall presence of evil was infinitesimally small. Well this actually means if you wish to know the universe you need to know love. And this is also amazing he said that in the afterlife all communication was telepathic. There was no need for spoken words nor even any separation between the self and everything else happening around you. All the questions you asked in your mind were immediately answered to you telepathically as well. So when people ask him what's the most important thing he wants everyone to know about the spiritual realm, he always answers saying that you are precious and infinitely loved more than you can possibly imagine. Dr. Evan says that you are always safe and you are never alone. The unconditional and perfect love of God neglects not one soul. Dr. Evan says that love is without a doubt the basis of everything. Not some abstract hard to fathom kind of love but the day to day kind that everyone knows the kind of love we feel when we look at our spouse and our children or even our animals. In its purest and most powerful form this love is not jealous or selfish but unconditional. You should know that this is the reality of realities the incomprehensibly glorious truth of truths that lives and breathes at the core of everything that exists or will ever exist, and no remotely accurate understanding of who and what we are can be achieved by anyone who does not know it, and embody it in all of their actions. Now let's say a few words about credibility. Dr. Evans' neocortex was completely non-functional during the time of his coma due to his severe bacterial meningitis so there is no scientific account for why he experienced this. In fact he gives refutations to nine different possible scientific explanations for his experience in his book. Exploring Naturalistic Explanations Now we are going to take a closer look at five potential explanations he outlines in Appendix B of his book. Note you should know that some of these explanations would make no sense to us as laymen untrained in neuroscientific terminology, so here are the most common explanations he refutes all of which are taken verbatim from his book. 1. He said that this was a primitive brainstem program to ease terminal pain and suffering. But this did not explain the robust richly interactive nature of the recollections. 2. Some medical experts say that this was just a distorted recall of memories from deeper parts of the limbic system that have enough overlying brain to be relatively protected from the meningitic inflammation, which occurs mainly at the brain's surface. But this also did not explain the robust richly interactive nature of the recollections. Three. Well this could have been a DMT dump. What is a DMT? It's a naturally occurring serotonin agonist causes vivid hallucinations and a dreamlike state. Dr. Evan was familiar with drug experiences related to serotonin agonist antagonists LSD. But he had no personal experience with DMT but he has seen many different patients under its influence. The rich ultra reality would still require fairly intact auditory and visual neocortex as target regions in which to generate such a rich audio-visual experience when he was in a coma. Prolonged coma due to bacterial meningitis had badly damaged his neocortex, which is where all of the serotonin from the raphe nuclei in his brainstem would have had effects on visual auditory experiences. But the truth is that his cortex was off and the DMT would have no place in the brain to act. 4. 
or it could be a reboot phenomenon which is a random dump of disjointed memories due to old memories in the damaged neocortex, which might occur on restarting the cortex into consciousness after a prolonged system-wide failure. But if you consider the intricacies of his elaborate recollections this seems most unlikely. 5. This could have been an unusual memory generation through an archaic visual pathway through the midbrain, prominently used in birds but only rarely identifiable in humans. It can be demonstrated in humans who are cortically blind due to occipital cortex. We really hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to share it with your friends and family. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.